Coming up on show 945, one of the reasons that GMC's Hummer EV could dominate is it's being engineered as a dedicated electric vehicle. I'll tell you why that's so important. Plus, on the podcast today, stick around for all of the big EV news. Volvo, battery electric trucks for the US. The UK goes green number plates. And why is Xpeng's Chinese stock skyrocketing? We'll find out. And some more EV stories for today. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily for Tuesday, 8th of December. My name is Martin Lee. I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Try something new today. The YouTube show and the audio version of the podcast is same, same today. Just trying out something to maybe make my day a little bit quicker. Let me know your feedback. So we'll start with the headline story. GMC's Hummer is being developed in its own bubble. Well, the pandemic may have introduced us to the concept of only mixing with people in our own bubble. Or is that just a UK thing? But now GM and the GMC Hummer EV are channeling that spirit. They have confirmed the Hummer EV is being developed without regard for what else is on the market. But is that a smart idea? Should GM benchmark the Hummer against its rivals? Or should they make the truck they want to make and not be swayed by what it'll be competing with? If there's one thing the EV community loves, it's benchmarking. EV drag races on YouTube went from viral sensation to cliche. Every time a new EV is out, anything that reviewers want to do is drag race the damn thing. Hummer EV vehicle performance engineer Todd Hubbard told Muscle Cars and Trucks, and I quote, let's just set a target and not rely on competitors and just make the best truck we can make. And we're going to make it super capable, have all this new tech, and we're going to do it to the best of our ability. That's uh, that's the kind of mentality to do the best job we can and make it a super truck, end quote. So the platform is called the BT1 platform, and it's bespoke to Hummer. The engineers don't have to make this work on a platform which wasn't designed for an EV. Truck fans may recognize the T1 bit of the platform from the Chevrolet Silver, uh, Silverado and, and more as well. But the Hummer is unique. Remember, it's only unique, though, because it's first. GM's roster allows for economies of scale, purchasing, part sharing, technology crossover. Now, I know the Hummer is really expensive, 100 grand plus, but those prices are going to decrease for the other models. I've often said the way to make a great EV is start with a blank sheet of paper. Don't make it a compromised car. <laughs> See BMW's strategy or even the Ford F-150. Same truck, different drivetrain, different powertrain adding batteries. Is that a good idea or not? GM will use the BT1 platform, and incidentally, there's a commercial version of it. I think it's called the BV1. And they will expand from that, making savings and increasing the choice of models. If they didn't, it'll be a financial disaster. But we know that's not the case. We know from presentations around their Ultium batteries, the plan is a lot of part sharing and flexibility and battery pack sizes as well. The motors, the drive units, all going to be used from everything from an SUV to a crossover to a large truck. Now, uh, those vehicles, like the electric Silverado, which is coming, are where they will really hit the economies of scale. They won't do it with the Hummer EV. It's not going to sell in, in big enough numbers, but it's so expensive. GM have a platform called BEV3. Now, that's going to be used for things. I think I'm right in saying, like the Cadillac Lyric, that's coming in 2021. Uh, that's a different podcast, though. Let's not, not go into GM's whole EV strategy. But it's very smart. Hummer EV is, is absolutely bespoke. It's only going to be unique because it's first, but it's a really smart thing to do and not to try and cobble it on top of a different platform or start with something else. I think it's a great idea, but what do you think? I'd love to hear from you in the comments today about what you think about the Hummer EV and how it compares to its competitors. Let's talk Volvo battery electric trucks in the US. Whilst the Tesla semi-truck sucks up all of the attention and oxygen from the commercial space, there's actually loads of uh, interesting vehicles and lots going on in the pure electric truck market. More than people realize, Volvo Trucks of North America introduced the fully electric Class 8 Volvo VNR model, and production starts early next year. Uh, they're going to be made in Virginia, actually on the same lines that make the diesel models, but rather than uh, shove in an oil burner, they've got 264 kilowatt hour packs. It's a big old battery. Top speed of 65 miles an hour, which is fine because, well, actually over here, European laws, it's either 56 or so is the legal speed limit. Now, I do gather 
that in the US, my American friends, they're saying, look, trucking is very different over here. And I say 56 is <laughs> is the limit. They're like, what? Nah, truckers go way faster than that. Uh, so this certainly won't. This is limited to 65, range of 240 kilometers. The trucks go up to 82,000 pounds gross weight. Volvo's been testing these as part of a trial in California, and they say it's to provide customers with a complete solution. So that'll be charging, it'll be infrastructure, it'll be employee education as well. But I can't imagine a single driver that is gonna say, you know what, I'd rather drive a stinky, slow diesel than actually these new electric trucks because they're a pleasure to drive, they are less stress, less vibration, just better to spend a working day in. And of course, we know from research studies as well that have been published numerous times, the people who do driving for a living, so taxi drivers, truck drivers, what they're exposed to inside their truck is they're not living in a vacuum, they're working all day in diesel fumes. And so for their own health, it's better to be electric. Great news. Let's talk about green number plates. From today, it's now legal to have a green number plate here in the UK. Of course, they are a legal identifier. I had to go through the legislation process. It took about six months, I think. Uh, from today, December the 8th, you can order your plates with a green rectangle or a flash, as they call it on the left, where the old uh, blue European flag would have been. Not after the end of the month, uh, Brexit. Uh, at the moment, it's just for those who want to show off their green credentials, though, because the benefits of having a green plate not yet defined. Government hopes local areas and authorities will introduce local incentives, free parking, bus lane use. And while some of that can be covered off with ANPR, so automatic number plate recognition, the cameras that scan your plate and know should you be in the bus lane or the taxi lane, and if not, we'll send you a fine in the post. There are still traffic wardens. I've still got friends who have been ticketed in an EV when EVs are allowed to park in certain spaces, but traffic wardens don't know and they give them a ticket. So these plates can be retrofitted to any zero emissions car that's on the market. No, you can't make one yourself with green tape. By law, each number plate must be made by an approved uh, company that makes number plates and they've got to display the name and postcode of the supplier, the British standard number, the trademark of the manufacturer and the component supplier. It is a legal thing. Don't get the green sticky tape out and make your own. But from today, you can have a green number plate, well, a green flash if you want to. I can't think why. I probably will just because. All right, let's move on. Why is the Chinese car maker Xpeng's stock skyrocketing? Well, the Chinese EV maker had a stellar November with stock price going up 203.2% and 100 of their uh, G3 crossovers are now being shipped uh, to Europe for the first time. They delivered uh, about 3,040 vehicles in October, about 4,224 in November. That's a total of 21,300 this year so far as a EV maker. They unveiled their new autonomous driving software at Auto Expo as well at the end of November. A reminder, Xpeng, the Tesla... Uh, be careful what I say here. The Tesla-inspired car company. Some would say a rip-off, but you choose your words. They're also in a legal battle with Tesla as well over a former employee who left Tesla, joined Xpeng to work on self-driving. Now, Tesla is saying, and this is not legal speak, trust me, uh, Tesla's argument is basically, prove you didn't steal our code. Let me see your, let us see all of your code. And Xpeng are saying, no, you can't see our code. Prove we stole it. Uh, so I think Xpeng have said, look, how about a third party arbitrator? Like we both, Tesla and Xpeng, both give their uh, self-driving codes to a third party and they can compare and contrast. And, and uh, at the moment, last I heard Tesla, I'm like, well, no, we're not giving our code to anyone. That one's going to rumble on and on. It's a, a common misconception as well that Tesla have open sourced their patents that others can copy in the true sense of open source coding, for instance. But instead... All they said was they promised not to take action against anyone using their patents. So sort of semi-open source in order to further the field of EVs. But Tesla do reserve the right to stop people using any of their IP. And let's face it, even the website looks a lot like a Tesla website. Certainly uh, inside the cars, uh, the self-driving display, all of that. The dash looks the same as the Model S and X. 
Okay, let's move on. And over here, Group PSA, the company that owns Peugeot and Citroen, etc., uh, following the launch of the electric versions of their medium vans, D segment, and the large vans, the E segment, uh, the four brands, so Peugeot, Citroen, Opel, and Vauxhall, will complete their electric van lineups with all electric versions of their compact van and associated passenger cars as well coming on the platform which is called the ECMP platform the powertrain is uh, water cooled brilliant 50 kilowatt hours of battery which is okay power output of 100 kilowatts uh, which is okay and 136 horsepower onboard charger which will charge at 11 kilowatts uh, on three phase which is all very very solid specs good to see these kind of vehicles a lot of them will be used for deliveries and commercial use going electric really really cleans up the air these working vehicles are almost going non-stop and it's fantastic to have electric options okay let's talk about a company called lunas they're going to begin production of an electric classic Range Rover, and quite a few of them actually. An electric Range Rover conversion, the Silverstone based company, Lunas, will make 50 of these classic ranges from 1974 to 1994. All electric, all off roaders. <coughs> Prices start at £245,000, that is $329,000. Yeah, it's a bare metal restoration and then a re-engineering of the whole Range Rover. So it may look like a Range Rover, uh, it'll have four-wheel drive, but it's got new suspension, new brakes, new infotainment, all of the electric gadgets. Customer deliveries begin summer 2021. Uh, some more plug-in hybrids next in the news. Volvo completes the electrification of their range of the XC60, a plug-in petrol, uh, three plug-in hybrid powertrains, a uh, supercharged and turbocharged petrol engine driving the front wheels, EV motor on the back, ensuring that the plug-in hybrid's efficiency is twinned with all-wheel drive. Of course, it's a Volvo. It's going to be safe. 11.6 kilowatt-hour battery in this. And also, the Audi A3 Sportback 45 TFSI, E, long name, come on Audi, shorten your names a bit, uh, will start uh, on sale in Germany this week. The electric motor is integrated into the housing of the six-speed gearbox that transfers power to the front wheels, and the package consists of 96 prismatic cells in the battery, 13 kilowatt hours of this, a little bit bigger, another pretty good plug-in hybrid it wouldn't be for me now that I've gone full electric, but I do appreciate some people interested in plug-in hybrids. I try and bring you the news. There's so many great full EVs. I don't know if I can recommend them, but they're out there and they'll do a lot of miles on electric power only. And when you do need to charge, plugging in a cable is hardly the most onerous of, uh, of tasks. But wireless charging, I do it with my phone. This is uh, always just rested on a... On a pad, maybe we need the same for our EVs. What do you reckon? Hevo, H-E-V-O, is the first production-ready, UL-listed wireless EV charging product designed and tested to SAE standards. The UL2750 standard and the recently published SAE standard establish requirements for performance, safety, interoperability for wireless charging of our EVs. Hevo say... And I quote, our system is also proving to be more efficient than wired level two charging, while also being the only technology equipped to serve both wired and aftermarket wireless enabled vehicles, end quote. I, I love it. I'd love a little pad in my garage or something. No point. Uh, it takes three seconds. Plug off the wall in the car. Done. This is going to be really useful for taxis, for working vehicles or a taxi waiting in the taxi rank as you move forward constantly charging those kind of things and of course if self-driving cars and robo taxis ever arrive unless we're going to employ people to be hanging around plugging them in we'll need wireless charging so what do you reckon is it a technology you're interested in or maybe this one is a little bit science fiction and won't be useful let me know in the comments below and we'll keep the conversation going thank you very much for watching today check out some of the previous videos and shows that we have made make sure you like and subscribe uh, to the channel so you never miss a program we'll try and get into a, uh, a rhythm of these i'd like to do a kind of 5 p.m publish in the uk which is early afternoon east coast in the morning on the west coast if we can get into that rhythm with the audio and the video now that we've added pictures to the podcast and uh i think that might be that might be good but again let me know your feedback 
this is all an experiment trying to take what was a you know almost a thousand episodes of an audio show and and make it into something on YouTube as well. So I need your help, need your feedback, and uh, I look forward to reading what you have to write in the comments today. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next one. Goodbye, bye.